Evergreen Health Medical Center in Kirkland, where 12 of the 14 people in our state who have died from COVID-19 were being treated. We have team coverage tonight, starting with Kemos Patrick Quinn, live at the epicenter of the COVID-19 outbreak. Patrick? Hey, Mary, the epicenter indeed today, the death toll of those who had coronavirus connected to the Life Care Center in Kirkland rose to 10. That's more than any other U.S. state and more than all but four countries in the world. And today, officials announced there'll be a huge federal presence on site here in the morning to start trying combating and containing this virus. One week after the state's first death, 30 health officials from the U.S. Public Health Services will be at the Life Care Center in Kirkland to help clamp down on the virus that's infected more than 30 people. Our cameras were here overnight and into the morning as 15 residents were taken from Life Care to nearby hospitals to be tested for COVID-19. Dr. Stephen Morris from the University of Washington, he told me he advised 12 12 of those 15 to be removed from life care. He said he was actually impressed with how things were running inside, especially considered considering this is a nursing home. It's not meant to manage um, acute illness and um, and, uh, you know, and that's from from the top to the bottom. Um, the nursing staff aren't trained to manage acute illness. They don't have this, the, the infrastructure to provide care at that level. Um, uh, and the rooms aren't designed at that level. Pretty much anything you could think of. Dr. Morris did stress he was just there for four hours yesterday for his assessment. He does not know how things were being run earlier in the week. He also mentioned that from what he saw, all staff members on site, they were following CDC protocol, wearing gloves, gowns, and masks. And now we're learning more help is on the way in the morning. Nahomish County is right alongside King County when it comes to fighting the coronavirus. The first positive case in Washington was in this area, and one person from the county has died from COVID-19. Not every county is King County. So much county has less resources available, and as we as we design these systems, we have to think of smaller communities. It's why Governor Inslee is touring Snohomish County Health District's Incident Command Center to get a better understanding on what the area needs when it comes to COVID-19. They're thinking about where we're going to be in this outbreak, not where we are today. He's sitting down with health officials here to update them on some of the things the state is doing to help out. For example, they're going to be paying for people who are being tested for the virus who also don't have health insurance. And with more tests becoming available, the governor says it doesn't mean anyone who may think they have COVID-19 needs to be tested. The vast majority of people who contract this virus will only have mild flu-like symptoms. But cases are still here in Snohomish County. According to the health district, there are 42 suspected cases with only two confirmed cases thus far. When it comes to a potential vaccine, Governor Inslee says that's still a ways away. If you only have mild symptoms, there isn't any particular pill that would be given even if you were positive for the virus. Campus have been suspended for the remainder of winter quarter at University of Washington. Starting Monday, classes and final exams will continue online. UW leaders say that's to help slow the spread of coronavirus in the region. Come on, Suzanne Fon is live at UW with more on that. Suzanne? Well, UW administrators say they are not wanting to take any chances, and that's why they're moving to online learning. Now, they say they made that decision even before they found out that a UW staff member tested presumptive positive for coronavirus. Okay, cool. So if I went to about... It's the last day for Matthew Cherchenko in his media and meteorology class at University of Washington. In the customizer. Starting Monday, he and other UW students will transition to online lessons. UW administrators say that's to help prevent the spread of coronavirus. UW is a big group of people and we're all in close proximity sitting in lecture halls. And, you know, in a situation like this, I think better safe than sorry. Final exams are just around the corner. Those will also be done online. I think that's a great decision. So I think that won't uh, affect like the study. Some of my finals were already scheduled to be online. So hopefully it won't be too much of an interruption. University leaders say they balance the educational needs and safety of students before deciding to suspend in-person classes. We took our actions with the abundance of caution and being very aware that in many of our classrooms there is incredibly close proximity 
uh, students are sitting in very close cross proximity to each other. Administrators said soon after they made the decision to transition to online learning, they learned that a staff member tested presumptive positive for COVID-19. The individual works about four blocks from the main UW campus and is now in self-isolation at home. There are several groups of people that are facing a heightened risk of coronavirus right now, like those with heart, lung or kidney disease, or people who struggle with respiratory issues like asthma or COPD. But so far, the virus hasn't specifically targeted children. Unless they have, you know, problems with their immune system or other chronic conditions that put them at risk, uh, children so far have done very well. I talked to Dr. Peter McGough with UW Medicine. He says kids aren't getting a big inflammatory response that lands many people in the hospital with coronavirus. Even still, he says the cases of COVID-19 will likely go up among children. What is the possibility that the coronavirus could evolve and suddenly start targeting younger people and children? So yes, it could have you know, further changes uh, and mutations, but I think the big thing we're going to be dealing with is just uh, you know, broader spread and you know, making it easier for people to uh, get ill with COVID, and that's going to put more, a uh, greater volume of all ages. Uh, with the illness. According to the CDC, from limited information published from the SARS and MERS coronavirus outbreaks, infection with children with these viruses was relatively uncommon. People we talked to today hope that our community can contain the virus.